Well, build my gallows and build them high Makes a long time climbing before I die I want the chance to spit in his eye Well, he gave me balls, but I can see between To a dusty yard and a long gone green They call that freedom, if you know what I mean And I try my sorrows, but the whiskey's gone Hello everybody, welcome to Short Bangers. I'm Matty, I've got uh, John and Colin with me. How are you doing, guys? I'm good. Good. Excellent, well done, well done. Uh, good to see we're learning, right? Uh, straight <laughs> into the questions, let's get some time on the clock. Uh, first uh, question tonight comes to Charlie B. Uh, so what's the funniest slang name for a body part? Slang name for a body part. Hey, do you remember years and years ago, you'll remember this, when we were at school, I think it was when we were at school. Their mate Colin, we Colin, because uh, because uh-huh. because uh, of the size of his cock, that's why he's called we Colin. Uh-huh. Um, I he... thought you were a big Colin. You should. I am. He is I big am. Colin. Because uh. <laughs> of the size of his belly. <laughs> <laughs> um, he said, "Purple-headed warrior." Remember? Remember him saying that? Aye. The boy will bring it his purple-headed warrior or something like that. I'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> Where that comes from, eh? <laughs> Wouldn't you what I mean? But you're like, fuck's sake. It's just been the viz. But uh, I'm not saying that's the best one. It's just the only one I can think of at the moment. No. Well, there, there was a, a couple of folk, so there was a port relief for your teeth. So they, they said, and somebody commented, like, in context, they'd been in a pub and the person who was leaving the pub had gone out. And the boy says to him, fucking hell, did you see the neck of his port relief? Because it's obviously... <laughs> Uh, I like uh, Shireen and Janny. That's, oh, that's, that's kind of it. That's, that's quality. That, that person's yeah. a hey, John, you're, you're deep in thought there. I just, I really like the traditional Bobby. I like the uh, Fat as oh, yeah. says King and Nairobi. I Aye. also <laughs> like Scone <laughs> for head. I've actually got this in the room through here. I, I, I don't know. Oh, the the Pythanosaurus, have you? I've actually got it here. But you can't. You can't look. You need to look up for the thing. You can't look up and say, "Oh, give me." It's not like a thesaurus where you go, Aye. "Give me slang for Fanny." Okay, what I mean, you've actually got to know what you're looking for. Um, so that's, that's a bit annoying, eh? Because I could have done a bit prep. <laughs> <laughs> I've got fucking about hundred. Uh, how many pages? Six hundred pages here. <laughs> fucking. It was standard. Six hundred pages of slang. I like. Um, I like the slang, like Edinburgh or Leeds slang for things like your chapter and verse. I quite like stuff like that. Aye, well, that, Especially because you see, you see a lot of that sort of stuff in uh, urban Welsh books. That comes in, uh, doesn't it? Your chapter and verse. Uh, Kerry, here's the thing, right? I don't, don't need the word getting a fit boiling, but Barry, right? It's no Cockney diamond slang for anything, right? But it's an Edinburgh word, right? Barry means good. Have Hibs ever had a team that's been Barry when they've got a player called Barry in it? I can only think of Lavity, but Lavity, you know. Was he a Barry? Friend of all, was he a Barry? Aye, that was the. Aye. Lavetti is probably the better team than Friend of all, I think, if he was a Barry. I can't remember if he was or no. Lavetti, was he not in. Did he not come in for the relegation season and he was there afterwards? But that was a good team, but it was a good championship team, so. Hmm. Oh well, answers on it. Text in 80295 anyway, you're Barry, it's Barry. Um, right, Ray Sunshine on Leith says, uh, oh, fucking hell, right, so this is a my picture on it. Should I try the picture? We'll see if it works. Uh, we need right. to try and get the picture on. Uh, yeah, well, there, you can almost see it, right? So what the viewer. Aye, there is a way to do that, but and somebody told us, and I forgot. And you never bothered your fucking chapter in verse. It, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> It, it seemed like effort. Eh? It says, right, what would be the best way, and this is, is basically what's happening in this uh, picture, what would be the best way to escape being pinned to a railway track by a tiger whilst bo- both you and the tiger wrestle a boa constrictor that hasn't noticed the oncoming train? Uh, to be fair, I don't think anything has noticed the locomotive yet. And that is effectively what's happened. There's a guy who is caught up on a train track Wrapped up in a boa constrictor, which is also wrapped around the tiger, which appears to be attacking him. How the fuck would you find yourself in that situation? Like, it's a heavy night. Eh? What do you think's happened? 
they must have escaped for the zoo because I mean the train unlikely that they've got to be sitting near a train train line, eh? Do you think this is what would really have happened in the jungle book? Kind of if it was true to life. The wee laddies like kicking about fucking singing these songs and that, and then all of a sudden the snakes just gone, fuck you, I'm having you. The tiger's gone, no, I'm gonna eat that cunt instead. Rather than try and look the after him. Would the snake beat the tiger or would the tiger beat the snake? And in, in this picture, the snake's definitely winning. Aye. Definitely. It's, it's, it's wrapped around the tiger's neck. So the tiger's strangle it. Tiger's not gonna be able to get it. They can't get a collar off. So Aye. so would that mean the guy can escape then, or is he also wrapped around? He's the also guy? wrapped around. Yeah. So his his best bet is if that fight goes on longer and takes up more effort than the snake aye, was expecting. Sneak it. Aye, and yeah. then he can. That's what I'm thinking. Whether or not that's going to happen before the train comes is another story. Could he move though? Could he like try and shuffle off the line at least while they and and take them all like shuffle save, backwards? Save them all. Save them all while they strangle each other, and he can fuck off while the snake's eating the tiger. I can maybe do that. Because the snake's not going to be hungry after they set the tiger, is it? No, and there's there's some debris. It looks like just clothes. He's had his clothes ripped as well. So they've obviously been fighting for a wee while. His uh, his hands and arms a bit cut. Tigers and I can. The snake doesn't look too too fussed by all this. By the way, I think the snake's got the situation under control. If the boy was clever, what he would do would be to try and position the snake in such a way that it formed like rails. And the train could just go over it like that, yeah. over all of them, because I think he's going to be able to get off the track in, in time. But right. if the snake could effectively take the former rails and he could divert the train. And would that kill the snake as well, do you think? I and think that. He's the place on. Aye. And the tiger's on top of him, so the tiger's probably getting wiped out by that. He's getting wiped out. I can see him a bit of life flattening off. That's his best. Uh, that's his best. Uh, effort right Ray also asks has little Lin Tai Lu got a hell to fly his flag on yet if not why not and if so explain why I, I didn't get the reference Lin Tai Lu and got nothing so same here any idea what he's talking about Colin do you I'm know who Lin Tai Lu is no right let me text that anytime Colin aye 80295 <laughs> do we want to have a, has a, have a, a guess at whether they got a hell to put his flag on uh, maybe that's why he's something quiet maybe he's it's the end of that mystery. Aye. Um, okay, Alistair Taylor says, what happens if you turn your headlights on while travelling at the speed of light? Oh, well, your lights are still... Your lights are going still at the speed of light, aren't they? What does he mean what happens? I think he's got to turn the lights off. Like, I, I'm just... What, would, would, like, the, would the come on if you were travelling at the same speed as... I bet your lights would go on at the speed of light. Aye, but if you're already, if you're you're effectively moving away from them at the same speed, so I don't think you would you would have to be slower than the speed of light to see. Is this to, not the same argument as if you're in an aeroplane traveling at five hundred miles an hour? No, but you're that's done the still. Oh, fucking maybe maybe it's it's all relative, isn't it? I, I don't know whether that would apply to the light being inside. So, so if you if you put you're your, looking at something that's traveling at the speed of if light, if you put your wee map but you're, light on, aye. Because look, that looks like the speed of light, or it is going to speed of light, but you, you're like a second behind the speed of light because you're watching it happen rather than it. No, right. So no. when, so if your car's... Uh, fuck those why we're in a car, right? They care what car's going into the speed of fucking light. On. Right. So yeah, they'll be in a car if you're putting the lights on. That's... Right. So we'll, we'll see. We've, we've, somebody's inventing a car that goes to speed of light, and you're in it. You're already travelling at the speed of light, and you know it's getting dark. So you think, I'll put my headlights on. Because you're going that fast, You basically, if, you, if you're standing in front of your car and you turn the lights on, the light happens, like, you know, a fraction of a second, like a, a tiny fraction of a second before you see it, because the light has to travel from the headlight to your eye. Mm. Are you, they, the, That's what I was meaning. That's what I, I was trying to say. Yeah. So if you're already, but if you were moving away, from the source of the light at the speed of light, that light's never reaching your eye because it's travelling at the same speed as you. I've got this image in my head of you flicking the lights on <clears throat> and the lights, like your dashboard lighting up, 
and the light in that just shooting out like lasers and destroying you. So that's where my head's at. Right. So not getting a sense of bonds with him then. Fucking that. I'm sure we might be getting sense of bonds. To be to be fair, I don't care what you're trying to light up because if you were going at that that speed, you, where are you just, driving? Like you're not traveling in the city bypass. It's aye. light thinking Christ, it's a bit dark. Like you're, you're probably I, in space, and you're not seeing where you're going anyway. Like if you're traveling that fast, you're, you've got time to react. Anything? There's no point in fucking seeing where you're going. Mm. Even if, even if you were in space, right, and you were traveling at the speed of light, you're not actually going very far. Like you, you're not, like you're probably not going to hit anything. <laughs> See the neighbor relax. Eventually, Aye. you would. Aye. Just, just enjoy the mystery. Just keep going. It's just fine. keep going. <laughs> Leave the lights off. Uh, right, Alistair also has. <laughs> what am I thinking now about fucking having a wank in space? <laughs> in my black dude car. Live there to catch you. <laughs> And space police can the space uh, police turn the lights on at the speed of light you, you arrive where you're getting can you, you open there's like a wee alien there to go you had a yoga could, could, could they all be lights on a police car in space like would they still revolve they would still revolve aye but they wouldn't reflect off anything so so the light if you're, if you're travelling at the speed of light and you turn the headlights on it would, would it have no effect would you like you wouldn't yeah. So, aye, same thing. That's actually probably a better one to imagine than the headlights, because you would, you would, because normally you would see the blue lights bouncing off houses or in the pavement, whatever. In space, you wouldn't have anything for the bounce off it. So you, I just don't think you'd see anything there. It, maybe behind you, like would the light still be there behind you? If you look in your, your rear, nice. your rear view mirror, would you see the blue light that's just happened a second ago? <sighs> I don't know, because I've, I've went away thinking about Tim Peake. Jinky was having a wank when he was this <laughs> <laughs> Jinky had that, because he was away about a year. Jinky had a wank the whole time. He went round the... I must have done it. I think um, there's only one... Uh, somehow stumbled <laughs> upon this, but I think there's only one documented... It'll be in his book. ...or admitted sexual encounter in space. But they might, like... There's female, male and female astronauts up there on the thing. Like, there must be a bit of intergalactic intercourse. Uh, but do you think uh, it would be worse than in the bath for trying to tidy up? It's what it's probably one of those things you go, I definitely fancy a ride in space, but the practicalities of it would be really dissatisfying. Uh, right, what's the most boring sport to play and watch? Or and play and or watch, uh, if Alistair Taylor? Hmm. Squash is quite boring to watch. It's not bad sure. to play. It's good to play, but to watch, it's like the ball's moving too fast to actually. I try to watch it when it's on the TV and that, like in the Commonwealth Games and stuff. Badminton's Mental. like that as well. Badminton's shite to watch. Aye. Yeah. Mental at squash isn't in the Olympics, eh? Compared to some of the sports that you see. Is it not? No, nah, it's never been in well, the Olympics. It's just, so it's just, how does it you've got qualify to be proper as a game fit, in, like, the Commonwealth, in the Commonwealth Games, but it's not an Olympic sport? How does that work? I don't know. I don't know. It's just different. Um, Entry sort of like whoever decides the Olympic committee is different for the Commonwealth Games committee. Yeah, so, aye, you would have thought squash would have been like a fairly <laughs> the like Commonwealth Games would be in like it. the Eurosport of sports, isn't it? And then uh, the Olympics, which uh, is like Sky Sports, the proper sports. Uh, <laughs> the, the Olympics is like all the good sports and a couple of shite ones. The, the Commonwealth Games is like freaking in and goes, isn't it? Aye, but the Olympics has got things like shooting and that in it, which like well, they're just like a pastime. You know what the, I mean? It's not the walking. That's shite to watch. Aye. Aye. Aye, I mean, marathon, the marathon's shite to watch, you know. It's like Aye. just you can watch, you can go out there and watch fuck the night anytime you want. Like, no, as fast as that, but fuck me, they're still just out running on the pavement. Would you, if you had, if you were on the Olympic committee, would you get rid of marathon running? Would you get rid of shooting? Would you get rid of equestrianism? I would go jumping. I would, if I was on the Olympic committee, I would design it for the uh, folk with short attention spans. So everyone, kind of like the hundred meters, fucking brilliant for it. So you're like, oh, I get this. <laughs> Whoosh, uh, brilliant for 10 seconds and you go, oh, that was good. And you can all talk about how good it was. That's, that's what I would be like. Everyone short, sharp, fucking fast and explosive. Aye, but but I was thinking there that like other sports, for example, that are short and sharp. So say like the, the javelin or the, the pole vault, like they are short, sharp, but there's also a lot of limbering up before they actually get their arse in gear and start moving. Aye, just didn't show it. Or ban it, ban the warm-up. See that? I just like they warm up, so like you're you're risking your hamstrings here. 
go. You're, you're, chucking, you're chucking one thing. What the fuck do you need to stretch? Just you're running for there. Oh, there they're fucking faffing about with Aye. tracks. It's not like, think, come on, you fuck. You're only running 100 metres. You're, you're, you're only running for 10 seconds. No, even that. Come on. If you're good, it'll need me 10 seconds. Aye. <laughs> Here's a question. See, when it comes to like the shot part and the discus, do you think they all use the same shot and they all use the same frisbee? Or have they all got their own? And who's checking them to make sure that they're all up to the edge? Aye, they'll have to be regulation. The, um, the discus, when they did the spinning round, they should give them a few pints first. That would liven that one up. Some of them look like they've sort of failed darts players in that way in these sports. I mean, they're just like, you weren't good enough at darts, go chuck that. <laughs> <laughs> failed darts players because they were chucking big steel balls <laughs> on the board. <laughs> Spinning round before they did it. <laughs> <laughs> the the darts is, is better than it's uh, than you'd expect. Hey, that sounds like something they'd be shy to watch, but then you watch it, you get quite caught up in it. Uh, what you, you, you have been? you for your Oh, aye, aye, we did, aye. That's right, so you did. Did aye, you combine um, pub sports with Olympic sports, so like javelin and darts? I like, have someone take a big run up, fucking boom. I'll contradict Phil myself. Taylor. Had the Phil Taylor a big fucking javelin. Just yeah. the <laughs> get the dominoes in. It's an Olympic sport. <laughs> you get the cards and the dominoes. Hey, but what would you combine Fucker. it with? Like 100 metre dominoes. <laughs> ah, domino rally. That's, you could make that, do you know, when, when they line them all up. I think they used to be on record breakers. So they'd have, oh, you yeah. said rally. I thought you meant really. Like, so instead of a batting, like, they hand over you a double bank or. or Five and a two. <laughs> and then they have to place it before they can run on again. Take the next one. They'll never let us charge it. They, uh, Neil Renton said, after watching that Ken Buchanan documentary and the chat of him having a statue built for him in the capital, uh, which citizen of Edinburgh would you erect the statue uh, for and where would it be put? Uh, I've not seen the Ken Buchanan documentary, actually. I didn't know. Neither, neither have I. It's just a bit of unnecessary context of the question, though, isn't it? No, but it's still... Uh, no, but... I know, I know, but I might go and have a look for it. As, as soon as going, but, uh, if he wants to text in, where to find it. Do you care uh, him? Do I care him, no. Oh. no. What about you, John? Um, don't I care him, either. <laughs> <laughs> what about Evan Welsh, to answer the question? Is he, he's a, he was a citizen of Edinburgh, wasn't he? I've seen him down Stockbridge and that when I was working down there. Um... I can't think of, I can't think of more famous. Who are you looking at? Well, does it no. need to be somebody famous? I suppose it needs to be for this because folk are going, who the fuck's that? So, it's fucking... famous. J.K. Rowland, famous. She's Welsh. already got a statue like, in Barman. That big, what's it? she got Hogwarts for her house, you know? <laughs> so, probably, probably Sir David Gray. What about a Is big... Bronze statue at the top of Arthur's seat of Ross Chisholm pointing the Easter Road, <laughs> <laughs> or just somebody called Arthur having a seat up there. I don't know if there's any famous I Arthurs like, for, for uh, Edinburgh. That feels like a piece of art that would sell for millions. Like there would be folk raving about that if there was just like a wee old man. It doesn't even have to be an old man. Someone called Arthur sat on just a bench. Arthur and his seat on Arthur's seat. So if, if we could That's do it, why why do we do the like a uh, sort of like truly really Banksy just fucking turns up and does something and then folk find it and go, oh yeah, fuck kind of Banksy. We could do something similar, but so right, so we could put somebody on Arth called Arthur on Arthur's seat, somebody called Hadrian on Hadrian's ball. Mm-hmm. Actually, because it's us, we should get it wrong. We should like Adrian Childs or something like that. We should do that kind okay, of statue Adrian Childs and Adrian's wall. So just get it slightly wrong each time. I can't think any other ones off the fucking top of my head, but you know, Big Ben, we could put some of the like a big Nigel Ben <laughs> <laughs> up on the clock. <laughs> the boy Ben, if that's in small, he's called Ben, he's a big tall guy, I know. He was on the Bermuda Bus Cuts last week, that's what I know. That's his name. I think he's married to Vanessa Phelps. I think you're right. You're right. Um, all right. Uh, Paul Mackay said, uh, Christmas music in shops, yes or no, and why? I don't mind that in December, like because you're getting the Christmas feel. But if it's on now, which I assume it is based on the question, it's a wee bit early. Yeah. Imagine working in the shop. 
Like, uh, you're going into your work the morning's morning at 8, 9 o'clock, and they go, fire up fucking now, this is Christmas on the CD player. Like, fuck's sake. That's probably a point, <clears throat> and I don't know like, what age it was, but it feels like now you listen to Christmas music and you've been listening to it for the last 40 years on average, like between us. How is there nothing? How is there nothing new? How is there nothing more memorable? Yeah. All all the stuff that you know, like the the wizard, oh, the, the the slade, and what have you. That's the oh, yeah. stuff you've been listening to for forty years. The stuff that's been coming out like more recently is shit and forgettable. Well, Maria Carey's one's the most recent, probably, and that was still about twenty years ago. Aye, I said to all my kids when he's writing these music, I said, stick a fucking Christmas song on it because yeah. it heard it, and that's what I'm thinking. Like, because the, the, there's not that many new ones, so you get a new one out. The, the royalties for that for yeah. fucking years. There's a guy for here, one of my daughter's pal's uncle wrote uh, Shaky Stevens Christmas, right. uh, Merry Christmas everyone, doesn't it fucking work? He used to work, he used to play in UK Call Club, this old man knows him for years ago, and uh, that's what he used to play in there on a Saturday night, and, and he wrote a couple of Shaky songs, uh, and he wrote another one, he wrote another famous one actually, I can't remember, and it was nothing to do with Shaky, but um, boy's fucking minted, because every year he just gets a check in for, Merry Christmas. Every, every Didn't have to do anything else. Yeah, like, fuck no one is. If, if, shaky if, one again. What's the shaky Christmas one? I can't remember uh, that. There's Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Aye, that aye. one, aye. Is it Merry? Yeah. I think my old bands didn't they? Like, I, I can there's like the integrity and thing and all that. I can remember that he wanted, but I'd be fucking straight on to it. Just get a good Christmas. Yeah. Christmas song we bang out early. Get, just make it rel- relatively catchy. That's it. Just relatively. Aye, it comes to be good. I mean, you're saying it's not, kind of, it's no cool or anything. Paul McCartney done one, John Lennon done one. Aye. I mean, it's not like, it's like, fuck's sake. Shakey Stevens. Aye, shakey. How, how, how yeah. much cooler do you want to get? Exactly. So, it's not like you're thinking, oh, it's no cool or not. Mariah Carey's a big name in what she does in that as well. Aye. It's, it's not like, uh, it's not like it's just shit bands that bring out, or shit in the backs that bring out uh, Christmas songs. Just fucking cash in. Uh, so, we're saying yes for Christmas music. <laughs> Christmas music in shops, as you were saying, yes, but not yet. Aye, aye. Give it aye. to mid November. It's already in Leicester. Aye. Um, what other uh, what other festivals could we write a song for that? Can it, they, they're running traditionally. There's no an Easter song, is there? Or a Halloween song? Is there a well, market there that we could tap into? For Hall- there is a, you can get scary songs off aye. for Halloween, eh? Thriller. Like, aye. Oh, these kind of ones. What else? <laughs> what else? Just thrillers. 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 Like, there is a handful of them. Cornered the market at Halloween. Monster, uh, the monster mash and all that. In and by Gary Glitter. <laughs> Very fine. Uh, right, uh, Andy. He did. Still get it on Spotify. Aye. I, that, I assume he gets money out of that, so you've got to be careful. But then, you know, Oasis well, used Gary Glitter in one of their songs, did. didn't they? Hello. So, and they still credit him, so I'm sure he gets money every time that's played as well. Uh, okay, right. Uh, moving on, Andy said, How sick was the guy who first ate Haggis and how hungry would he have had to be to tuck into that? I've definitely talked about this before, where I find it, I'm really curious to understand how cooking developed over the century, or cooking and baking and what have you, like, how did we ever, at what point, and was it just through, or was it just through trial and error, that we were able to get the right combination of eggs and flour and milk and so on and so forth? Aye, by accident. Like, there must have been, like, a, an element of <clears throat> experimentation with, with haggis. Yeah. Aye, yeah. well, it would be to, to make sure you're not wasting stuff, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aye, all, aye, that, aye. All, all born out of necessity, but... Aye. I mean, you're taking a gamble the way, can you think what goes into fucking haggis? And haggis is nice, you know, I'm not talking down yeah. haggis, but when they were first making it, and... Aye, that's a leap of faith, haggis has been about, like, a couple hundred years, like four, five, six, seven hundred... What do you reckon, Carl? Yeah. <laughs> how, I can see your face, is, my, is that you googling? I'm googling. Google When was when did haggis start? That's my question. When is, is, is the guy suggesting haggis isn't the nice in the question as well, or is he? No, no. I think just the no. fact. Uh, when did haggis originate? That's it, it's more. Uh, there is that leap of faith. Is what were you? What the fuck were you thinking? Putting all that together? Uh, it's, it's just, just lucky. It tasted nice, eh? I mean, they're talking about wanking off a. Uh, what was it? The vanilla. Vanilla flavoured sort of uh, fucking oh skunk was it the skunk was it ah oh, oh, beaver was... beaver a beaver and there was vanilla flavoured fucking spunk or something ah uh, it was something that was anal gland or something wasn't it like oh uh, that was uh, anal uh, gland something uh, uh, so folk just try stuff eh fucker but I'd, I'd assume 
I'd assume that if there was people that weren't wasting any part of the animal back whenever it was that haggis was developed and they were just kind of going, right, have a bit of that, have a bit of this, and we'll chuck it in the sheep's stomach, there must have been some cooking involved. It wouldn't have just been a, a straight case. Of, like, they wouldn't have been eating it raw. Aye. It's like, they wouldn't have been guzzling the sheep's, milk, uh, the sheep's blood or whatever. Right. Wikipedia says, although the name hogs, by right, H-A-G-W-S, or haggis, H-A-G-E-S-E, was first recorded in England in around 1430, the dish is considered traditionally of Scottish origin. It's even the national dish as a result of Scots poet Robert Burns' poem addressed to haggis of 1786. So fucking, that's a long time. But we well, can imagine then, it definitely would have been out of necessity. Yeah. Just didn't waste anything. Cook it up and then fucking hope for the best. The chunk oats in that and it's insane to certainly pad it out a bit, maybe. Aye. Uh, oh, great. I was going to say we're running out of time, but I think we'll just bash on and just finish the rest of the questions. There's not that many minutes there. Um, Andy also asked if you could replace the royal family with another family in the world, who would it be? It can't be your end. Oh, what? Was that genuinely how that tweet finished? That it can't be your own? Aye. Fuck. I only saw the first part of it. I thought, so you're going to say, well, why not mine? Mine or mine, aye. I'll have the rest of you fund me. Totally. That sounds great. Well, what about if I put Matthew, your family in charge, and then I just get the benefits, the kickbacks and that, like the helicopters and the... Land Rovers and that. Money. Aye. aye. Or, or actually, my preference would be just to fucking scrap them all together. And aye. no have it and no replace them. Well, you would if you if you if you started a country of the day, you wouldn't pick a royal family, would you? Like it's a fucking ridiculous yeah. notion. It yeah. really is. John, it's a ridiculous you, notion that seems to be really, really popular yeah, in this country. But like, I, I genuinely do not understand it. Aye, it's, it's fucking nonsense. It's like Game of Thrones. You watch that, and every kind's like, "Ah, oh, what be the king?" And we've got all these like ridiculous claims, so they can just yeah. basically get money off every kind and tell they can set the rules. And, and if there was a referendum or something like tomorrow on it, they would they would win by a landslide to keep the cunts. Yeah, it's mental. I just just what yeah, you're they saying. They take all your money. Opinion. They don't pay tax or fuck all. You know what I mean? They can go beasting and folk and they get away with it. Oh, that, it's fine. No worries. Aye, that's fine. We'll, we'll keep them. They, they, bring tourism, tourism. they bring in tourism money. Aye. That's the, you know, folk will still come and see the palace and that, if there's no constraint in that. Aye. Aye. They make uh, the rules and they exempt themselves from it as well. Uh, that's my who, latest bugbear. What's your, uh, what's your answer, John? What family? Just thinking about the royal family. <laughs> is that who you're going to say? Off the telly. Somebody said that. Aye, off, the, like, off, the te- off, I don't, off the telly. Off the telly. Another family. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd say the McGinns. The McGinns. <laughs> oh, yeah, right how much? I, think of the, the tourism money that Mrs. McGinn's sausage sandwich would bring in. Exactly. Could churn out, like, you could actually churn it out like McDonald's, just like made to the same recipe every single time. Mass produced Mrs. McGinn's buddies, sausage uh, buddies. I had a bacon and egg roll earlier for a, a, a wee snack fan. So we were, we were doing in Recife for a, a, an appointment and I was just uh, like, saw it. I was like, oh, I could fucking murder a bacon roll, a bacon and egg roll. And it was fucking superb. Proper snack fan? Aye, proper snack fan. Ken, did, you, you, you would say probably questionable hygiene. I was going to say, dirty yeah. fingernails and all that oh, stuff. Un- undoubtedly, like with... Uh, yeah. So there's a boy came up for a couple of coffees uh, as I was waiting. The guys, uh, guys cooking the bacon, which was already sort of pre cooked, is only like kind of warming up on the uh, on the thing. And so the guy says two two coffees. To be fair, the guy sanitised his hands, but then he went in and got this big uh, big bottle of water. But it was like kind of like a refillable one that he's probably had for about forty years. It's what it looked like to fill the kettle. Mm. The kind of, you wouldn't. You wouldn't have put your house on it being fresh water every day. That went but, if boiling, but if you're yeah, boiling, but if you're boiling, well, that's that's a that's a fair point actually. It's like how you can boil water in a, a bathroom and that, and you can drink it. Eh? Aye. If you're having a cup of tea. I'm not having a cup of tea. You're saying it goes. Never done you any harm before. You never found it suspicious. He takes the kettle in the bathroom. <laughs> Uh, Leon says uh, where did the saying don't make a song and dance about it come from and who was the first person to make a song and dance about something and get tagged with that saying you ever heard about the 
there was like a laughing, like an outbreak of laughing in like 14th century Germany or something. And there was like 70 odd folk ended up dying. It was like a kind of flash plague sort of idea. What the fuck are you talking about? No, no, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Um, and I wonder if that was it. Like, I wonder if someone started and went, and the guy went, oh, you like, what's wrong with you? Like, you're making a bit of a song and dance about it. And then everyone else joined in. And that's what it stemmed for. Well, it could be, what was it, the Ring of Ring of Roses was about the uh, the plague, wasn't it? Yep. And oh, that had, so that was something that they made a song and dance about. Uh, what did you, I'll put German laughter deaths in a Google here, John, to see if uh, doesn't it been seem to be anything about German laughter deaths. Oh, hang on, dancing plague of fifteen eighteen. Right, uh, it was a case of dancing mania that occurred in Strasbourg, Alsace, in the Holy Roman Empire from July to September fifteen eighteen. Somewhere between fifty and four hundred people took to dancing for days. So, I I've got basically they discovered wrong about that. They, they <laughs> discovered the ecstasy. That is pretty much where Eckies were uh, the, the first known instance of folks sharing. So they them. definitely made a dance about it. Aye. I wonder if there was an outbreak of singing somewhere, and they've what? like over time that's the, it's just been conflated as one event. But see, they make don't... a song and dance about it like the, the Strasbourg. Aye. But well, maybe so, I, I think of the plague thing because it's quite insensitive, eh? Because you think, look at all the death yeah. that happened, and then you've got, well, let's make a nursery rhyme with it, which is a bit disrespectful. I suppose because it suggests it's a, a negative to sing or dance. Aye. So I'll, I'll go with that. That seems like a. Yeah. That's something that you could you could probably claim as being true. Like, in some days you could say something that if you say it convincingly enough, folk might go, oh, that's, that could be right. I, I was like on, on Friday when I said to. We were in talks to take over off the ball when Tam and Stuart uh, retired and nobody Aye. fucking acknowledged it. And I thought, they don't fucking believe me. Definitely not. Because I'm just saying that because we've been told to keep it a secret. Aye. Aye. That's Aye. why I'm saying that. It's double bluff. Uh, John Callahan says, what if oxygen is slowly killing us? What if it is? Well, it is. It is, is that, is that the answer? Aye. So, does, uh, oxygen does uh, damage to you. Does damage to loads of things. <laughs> you sound how you don't live so long. Is that how you don't so long? Like, over your period of your life, oxygen is Aye, the, the way I, I can't remember what, I watched something on TV about it one time, and they just said, like, can it, it, it goes on into your body, and like, obviously there's benefits that keeps you alive that you absolutely need it, but it does other sort of marginal negative effects that over time Aye. cause issues. But yeah, you, you leave stuff out in the air. It, it fucks a bit of bread. Like, you leave a bit, a bit of bread just That's sitting right. on the worktop, and it's fucked after a wee while, so... Yeah. So, uh, so you just you, you can't do anything about it. What's the alternative is to not have oxygen, and then that'll do yeah. a lot more damage. I, I'm no, I'm not sure I'm on board with that. Like, I, I get what you're saying about like bread going mouldy, but why do we not go mouldy? It dries it out before it goes mouldy. It dries it, so it dries it out, doesn't it? If you left a bit of bread out overnight, you'd go in the morning, it would be all, it would be hard or not solid, but you know, it would, you would get that sort of Aye. crusty, crusty feeling on it. You so that's, that's it. just the damage it's done overnight. So why don't why don't we go mouldy when we're exposed to the air? Because you're, you're, you're the side. You, you effectively do. What happens when you age, John? Right? Are you so saying the age is just like a, a more pleasant it's, mould? Oh, <laughs> it, it's, it's, yeah, so it's not it's not mould, but it's the effect of like you, you, <laughs> we've not got grey hair. We've got mouldy hair. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, not, 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 not mould, right? But. <laughs> If you if you think like so when you're when you're young, right, kind of like even like your skin's all supple, like everything's smooth and but it's only that when you're ninety, can you look at the queen? Ninety five, right? We're talking about the royal family. She doesn't look like she did however long right? so she's aged, she's withered, her body's taking on uh, she's got like, mouldy. Damn it, she's effectively mouldy. Huh? We'll go with that analogy. Right? So so Oh no, wait, hang on, hang on. So Getting on board with what Colin was saying, if you leave a slice of bread out overnight, it dries out and it goes a bit hard and crusty and whatnot. So that's kind of like your aging process, but the mould is really when you're in the ground. Aye. And you're decomposing. Aye, okay. And it, does it, it does it at a faster rate than we do. 
So I think the only the only trick really is to stop breathing. I didn't have oxygen. Uh, what would you? Uh, I was going to say, what would you inhale instead if you instead if, uh, if you couldn't have oxygen? What if you could find magic if you, markers? <laughs> if you could find an alternative, because I'd, I'd imagine the the only reason that we are not the only reason, right? Because we we know oxygen works, right? And there's a plentiful supply here on Earth, so we're all right. And we know if you go somewhere else to another planet, that oxygen doesn't exist and we would die. But there might be another planet somewhere that has a gas that is, does the same thing. It works like oxygen, but it's no oxygen. It might be better. Aye. They all live to 200 and that. That'd be all right. Yeah. Only if your body kept up with you. Well, it would, because you wouldn't have the oxygen killing it, John. You wouldn't be going holding, would you? Well, that's what I mean. Like, we're looking for something where 100 in the, on that planet breathing that gas makes, like, where 100 is the new 50. Aye, that's it. It's all relative, isn't it? Aye. Uh, does oxygen kill you? That's the first thing. See, if you put uh, pure oxygen can be deadly. There you go. That's the first thing that comes up. So if you put does oxygen, right, into Google, do you know how you have that game where you, you kind of guess what yeah. it suggests? So does oxygen kill you? Pure oxygen does uh, can be deadly. Um, is oxygen harmful to humans? Uh, technically, yes, it is. There you go. QI, yeah. QI for fucking idiots. Eh? Here yep. we are. Uh, right, William asked, uh, what if your metal detector wasn't working? Would you just be looking for stuff forever? How would you ever know? That's a fair question. This before. Lovely. It's a wee bit, aye, there's something very similar to that about guy. I was just thinking it's a wee bit similar to, I've got a gas bottle for my pizza oven. How do you ever know when the gas bottle's empty? Well, you do, you know, because the fucking gas stop's coming out. Like, but Aye. how do you check it? Can before you, if you were before you were to fire it up, I suppose it's like the same with the metal detector. There must be a warning on it that says just like a different, a different tone, a different, a different beeping uh, noise. A little bit beeps. Aye, just <laughs> or, or, <laughs> or you put a bit of metal down to check it. You fucking check oh, it. Is that the answer? And you, you kind of, if you're if you're going out metal detecting, then check it before you go. Check before you go. What if, take a, what take if, a bit of metal with you to check it as you're going. Yeah. What if, Colin, you see a boy doing the beach <laughs> and he's got a metal detector, right? And he chucks a bit of metal in and you think to yourself, he's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely would, like. I definitely he's, would be taking a photo of that. He's playing fetch with his metal detector. <laughs> 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 but, uh, he's just found a bit of metal that he fucking threw in his <laughs> you see him oh I can picture him like, picking it up and stick it in his backpack and standing there gearing him around that boy's like well done mate <laughs> champion metal detective I'm sorted uh, alright uh, SDG says uh, in a remake of Jaws which current hip staff would get the main roles Ooh. oh fuck I can't remember which, which Jaws? Are we going with the, the first one? So you've got like, ah, like Ray, Roy, Roy, Schneider, Roy Scheider? Yeah. He's the boy that Brody, does the killing. It? Oh, he's Aye. like the sheriff of the town, isn't he? Aye. Chief, Chief Brody, is it? I can't remind all the names in it. Yeah, there's the, but if you think there's the, the Schneider and then there's the boy in the boat. Um, there's Schneider, there's everyone else that gets eaten by the shark. Aye. And then there's a the big shark. So who survives? Who's the one that's going to stick their head, head stick their head up and say, "No, we need to close the beach." Who's that man at Easter Road? Oh, the one that says we have to close the beach, or the one that, that does say uh, the the beach is safe. Everybody go in the water. It's who's fine. The one that's, who's the one that's quietly effective, but no flamboyant? Stevenson and that. No, that's it's Jack Ross. But who who enjoys? Oh, I that? Is. Well, I thought Jack Ross and, was and, and everybody movie. watching it's gone. Everybody's watching it going, "Fuck's sake!" Oh, I, I like that he caught the shark, but he just didn't catch it Aye. attractively <laughs> enough. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he fucking some people died before he killed it. <laughs> and and they're bringing out these tokens about the shark as well. You can buy them. It's great. <laughs> Big McGregor's going to be the shark. Eh? Just fucking beasting everybody out the way. Gosh, fuck you. 
just imagine him like crashing through the waves like Aquaman. <laughs> Tap off. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, we'll leave that one there. Ewan McAleese said, if you could genetically modify animals, which animal would you modify and how? I would give uh, donkeys human penises just to see how they fucking like it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was going to ask there, like, are you going to improve an animal or are you going to hinder them somehow? Or like, I, what's I, the opposite of improve? Uh, uh, not improve. Worsen. Aye, aye. Worsen's a good word. I, I think I'd give giraffes wee legs. Wee legs or wee necks? Wee, wee legs. Wee legs. Stop aye. ignoring them. Nick boy. Because that, if you think are they about going to be, it... Are they, are they going to be like short but fat legs? Or are they going to just be like short thin legs? Short like short wee... thin legs. So the same the same design as they've got the now but smaller. It's basically just as a two fingers up to evolution, right? Because basically they're only... Only have long necks because those are the ones that survived and could reach the leaves of the trees. So, giraffes that were born, however many hundreds of years ago, with smaller necks, didn't survive because they couldn't reach the food. So that's basically what happened. Right? The longer neck ones survived, that gene pool carried on. So just as a two fingers up to evolution, and go ha ha, you're all fucking smart, but you're big fucking necks. Have tiny wee legs now. Then they kind of kill them off. So as two fingers up to evolution, <laughs> you would effectively kill giraffes. All well, giraffes forever. Only for a little while. And then what I would do is I would genetically modify birds to make them heavy as fuck so they made the trees do. <laughs> and what would happen with the giraffes, there would be folk who would start getting, what is it they call, is it teacup pigs? Or, you know, like your wee handbag dogs. You have wee handbag giraffes. That would be the new thing for the folk in Hollywood. With their massive neck. Paris Hilton cutting down Rodeo Drive where we <laughs> handbag giraffe. Aye, I'd help them out. I, I'd do it for a wee while just so they weren't really quite so smug as they are now. And then, like I say, I'd probably make birds heavier so they made them the trees and then the, the leaves were lower. Did the Simpsons not do this already with Homer and his time traveling toaster? Where, like, he was warned, don't touch anything. And he maybe only touched even accidentally one thing and then he just destroyed whatever it was that he was and everything <laughs> got fucked up. And I'm just thinking of you, like, are you limiting it to one animal or are you going to do it to all animals oh, right, and so make you, everything weird? So you could, well, it, it does say which animals are singular, so you can only pick one. So if I, if I, if, if I was going with giraffes, I wouldn't be able to help the birds or make the birds heavy. So in that case... Mm. What mechanism are you using as well? Is it is it a gun? Is it is it some sort of laser? Is it an injection? Is it a tablet? Uh, a petri dish. And <laughs> come and stand uh, in this petri dish. <laughs> uh, so no, that's what you start off with that, and then one of those kind of you know the glass bulb bottle things with a tube coming out of it with smoke bubbling. <laughs> so just basically like a lab, basically. High school like, chemistry set. Aye, I'm going to be in a lab doing it. But <laughs> laughing. Back into the Loriston building in my fucking water here. Aye, yeah. laughing. <laughs> <laughs> just get elephants about massive one behind theirs. <laughs> what are you doing then? What are you doing, uh, Colin? What animal are you fucking about with? I, I, I honestly, I, I don't care if I care enough, enough about animals, Stephen. <laughs> Think like what about oh, again a, a wasp so they can't sting? Is that is that too practical? Oh, on that, so what if we what if you were able to what if a wasp was to sting you but they had the same effect as a bee? Like they, they, they only got one sting and they died. But bees, because they are the friendlier, more contributory species, they could sting you repeatedly because they never ever do. Like they're actually there'll be cuddly things like they didn't want to sting you wasps on the other hand are like flying scorpions they just fucking exist to hurt you so why don't you just take their stinger away all together then rather than letting them have a one go because they're so vindictive they would, the wasps are that fucking nippy they would date just to spite you even though they were going to die they would still go is there just one it, change that you can make aye so I would just take their stinger off them if you were going to do that no, I was going to say, what if what if the change was that you had it ingrained in the wasp's brain that if they stung you, they're going to die, and then you never get stung again? 
But you would never get stung again if they're about a fucking stinger. Aye. Because bo- that's what I'm saying. Aye, most that, that, like... they, would, they would go, oh, I'm feeling a bit poorly. This is probably my last day. I didn't live that long anyway. Come on, I'm going to go out with a bang. Some kind of... Aye. I almost feel like if you were to take the stinger away, it just like it sort of... It almost, I know that it's not a male or a female thing, but it sort of emasculate, emasculates them. But I want to give them a mind fuck. Like, ah, you can still sting folk, but if you die, you're going to die. Like, I want that to be proper fear within the wasps so that they just go about their day and do whatever, and you'll never see them again because they'll just what? they'll just be wandering about going, what, are what is my purpose? What are they for? Eh? What is their purpose, though? I don't know. I don't know. I would maybe make them make a different noise when they were flying. You would say the business, but they're like a comedy noise. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> Do that. Or, or get, let your dog speak. Get a human voice. Aye. Aye, but... I got enough lit back in my house, so I didn't need another one to fucking make speak back. That's the thing, like, we, we neutered the dog, and if you've ever watched Rick and Morty, the, the dog ends up... Um, Taking on like a robotic suit and <laughs> just all the dogs rise up, take over the planet. And I'm not really sure I want that. Sure how, how are you going to look your dog in the face when you say, Why'd you take my boys? Eh, because we weren't going to let you shag anyone. But why the fuck were you not going to let me shag anyone? Oh. I've not got an answer for either of those questions. You, can, you well, still sh- can they still shag somebody though? Can they not? I kind of get pregnant. Oh, I never thought about that. But is he, has he got the same instinct? I've never, I've never put this into practice. Because I've normally said to anyone, or anyone that I've encountered that's got a female dog, I've said, well, they've been dressed, or she's on heat. I'm like, well, he's fine, like, he's yeah. he's uh, he's been snipped. And everyone just went, oh, that's fine, then, like, we've all just gone our separate just ways. Let, let but Murphy's shag. never made any effort to rattle a girl dog. Maybe he's just no fancied one yet. <laughs> maybe. maybe. Maybe he's a gay dog. The wife, honest, the wife reckons that he's gay. Because he's shows more interest with boy dogs. It's all right. It's, it's the 21st century it can be gay it's fine it can it can, can, can I, I, I just want to make sure I've got his right pronouns they must eh? they must they must be allowed to be they must be allowed to be gay though eh? they're Aye. not allowed they're allowed fuck me they must actually be gay dogs based on like the human race they must we had, be uh, animals eh? the guinea pigs were they shag anything but we had the two guinea pigs they were both male and they were uh, they were trying to hump each other relentlessly hmm. how Why? did they decide <laughs> Basically, it was whichever one was strongest. Eh? So Dave, Dave was stronger no. than Pipsky. You could tell just by the names. Well, it sounds like the names. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't care that when we named them, but maybe that maybe that played a part. Well, maybe they knew. Eh? Uh, did, they know, the roles. did they not say that there's that there's only two species that have sex for pleasure? I think it's humans and dolphins. Is there any other animals out there that masturbate? How did it? Oh, aye. Well, Definitely, because you've seen like the, the no, you've been framed, but like on YouTube and that camera, there's been a gorilla at the zoo. Can folk have been watching them for the turn their kids away because there's a monkey fucking knocking on it. When I saw it, thank you. Aye. <laughs> Shamelessly, just say, who is looking at? Just. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. He's just built a yogurt on himself. Somebody say something, don't he? You paid for this, How do they care? How do they care which animals are shaggy for fun and which ones are are doing it for uh, procreation? Productive. Ah, there there must be. Surely, some is just like a byproduct. Amber, no, you know. Google? He loved this. Amber, Amber, he loved this. Oh, Amber, aye. Have we, got, have we got his phone number? What's the five digit code? 80296. 80296 for that, Amber. Okay, you and also asked this should we build a fun pier in Leith? If so, what attractions would you want to see at the end of the pier? It's normally a pier. <laughs> a boy with a metal detector. <laughs> it does. <laughs> a bit of metal. I wonder why there isn't a, 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 a pier in Porto, though, eh? Like, I know at least, at least not got a beach. Again, normally a pier where there's a beach, eh? Aye. Um, but you wonder why there isn't a... Aye, because you've, you've got the problem in that, eh? So... What was... Because there's quite a few of them. I say there's quite a few of them. I'm aware of quite a few of them down in England, usually because they've... They're, like, 150-year-old and they've gone up in flames. What was the purpose high. of them? Is it just, like, for a place to be out about over the water and maybe get a bit of candy floss or something? 
Aye, I don't Aye. know. I've been on like Brighton and that. Brighton's got a huge one and all that. Aye, you're right, but I, I don't know. I don't know what the purpose was. Maybe space. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's what happened. Maybe somebody was halfway through building and just thought, fuck, have we done this for? <laughs> just <laughs> just stop. Fucking waste of time. Uh, is it one of those like quaint English things that never quite caught on up here? Because I was say, there isn't many up here, eh? I'm, I'm not aware of any. Like I, the only peers that I'm aware of, I think I've got a purpose, and they're not like the peers that like you're talking about. It's usually like it's like a wee jetty or a pontoon kind of thing for a ferry. Mm. Maybe they start thinking if we just like a walkway, they'll just keep going until they find somebody else. But then they realise how deep the sea gets quite quickly, and just went shit idea, stop it here. Be a nightmare. They must go and I was going to say they must go and just do it when the tides out. Eh? I was going to say that. Try to dig that the post the posts just, in in the first place. Can they get the cement in to, to hold them in? Pull the plug out, go in, set the post, put the plug back in, turn the taps on. Aye. Do you see how they did it with the Queen's Ferry crossing? I heard it fascinating. So they uh, they sunk like a big tube into the water and then they pumped all the water out there. So they basically had like a bit that was higher than the sea level that was dry that they could then work in and do whatever they were doing oh, for the right. groundwork. So were that, there, there's that, a folk uh, on the seabed within that big tube, is that what you're saying? Aye, they would have been down there sorting out the, the foundations out for the for the big yeah, those boys must have had ballsy steel or like well, absolute no, just, faith in the science. Uh, but they're surrounded by a big tube of like fucking however thick concrete, generally, but it's absolutely like, that, that's not letting any water in. And the water can't come over the top of it. So you're, you're home and dry. Aye, but that's, that's like saying that concrete's never failed. Ever in the history of mankind, and it has. Well, this is true. This well, is that's true. what I'm saying. Like they've got faith in in the science, like both yeah. in the, the construction of the concrete and also the the mechanism or whatever it is you call it. I'm guessing it's some not a vacuum exactly, but in keeping the water out, like the pressure. Ah, you're talking about that. He's just talking about a wee bit in the fucking the river Forth. Like imagine the boys doing the channel, for the, the, tunnel. the channel to I. You know what I mean? It's like why imagine they never done being, a tunnel for the Forth. I did get explained once by one of my mates because he he does. He's in the building game, but I was like, "Why don't you just build a fucking tunnel or dig a tunnel and build it, um, and another fucking bridge that will get shut when it's too windy?" You know what I mean? Just like dig a hole and drive through that. But there was—I remember when they were like after they built or during the, the construction of the Queen's Ferry Cross, and they did say that there was a there was a tunnel that connected both sides underneath the Fourth Road Bridge, but it had been closed and or disused and like caved in or whatever whatever after a certain period of time but I think there's like maybe still an opening to it that you can see but you can't go in it mm-hmm. um, I'm guess I don't know if it's maybe like something to do with the rock like the machinery to dig out whatever it's something to do with the rocks my mate tell me I can't remember what because I wasn't that way inclined once he gave me the actual answer when I was moaning why they were just digging a hole Aye. he started telling me the reasons and I was like nah it's a bit fucking boring switched off you're starting end points for it have to kind of like to get the right angle to kind of safely drive into a tunnel. Your, your yeah. starting end points would have to be fucking a fair distance away from the the water as well. Right. So I think that had something to do with uh, part of it. Obviously, know the bit that your mate was talking about, but and what they realised was that the exit would have been in on Fairmont, so they just sacked it. <laughs> ah, fuck that. Uh, right. You know, says how can we bring more pizzazz into football? Uh, what would you do to make a home game more entertaining? Pre-match, halftime, and afterwards. Drugs. But we'll just give everybody some drugs on the way. Legalise. Aye. Legalise drugs. I was thinking about this recently, like with some of the chat. We said that we we're not, we're not going to talk about football, but let's just say that there's a football team out there that's fifth in the league and managers are getting a bit of flack after one defeat. A really shitty defeat. But actually, like the amount of football that's on TV now, like it's it's constant. It's constant, it's constant, it's constant. Um, there was an article, I think, with. Uh, Philip Lamb, who was reflecting on, I think it's FIFA's proposal or UEFA's proposal, was to have the World Cup every two years. Mm-hmm. And he said, if that happens, the European Championship will just be, they'll just drop in and follow suit. Um, adding to that, like you've got the, pre- you can watch football pretty much any time you want. It's just there constantly. Can't remember what my point was. Drugs, yeah. definitely get drugs. Yeah, probably good, because <laughs> uh, it's, I, I mean. You could. Uh, I've seen folks saying that this week. Oh, the football's no boat. The football, football's not exciting enough. That's why folk are not going and that. And you, I'm not sure that's the reason folk are not going to the football. 
I don't know. I don't know what the reason is. Like folk, folk went to the football and it was shite all the time Aye. anyway. And like at least it's, there's maybe not as exciting as when Tony Tony Mowbray was a manager. But if you're winning quite a lot of the time and you're at the higher end of the league, it should it should be all right. I, I just uh, big screen big screens are not the answer, are they? Because that's definitely not worked. Um, like that was. Like, I, didn't, I, didn't I don't know. I, can I see didn't the... understand the match day. You kind know, of that stuff that people speak about. The experience. The experience, because I think the experience is just going to the game and watching the game. I didn't understand the the, the experience, how the experience would be enhanced by being able to buy a pint, like on the concourse, big so, deal. like putting the game on the big screen, big deal. You know what I mean? It's like I'm going to watch the game. Like I'm no, I'm I, I don't I don't get the whole thing about chat about experience. But is that is that because that's how we've we've always done it? Can you just go we go to football? Hmm. Do you know, like some folk go to the pub. And then they go to the game and then they go back to the pub and then that's what they enjoy. Or can like, you know, I, I drive to get there, watch the game and then go home again? That's that's pretty much yeah. it. But if if you can, it could be different. And then I suppose it's whatever that different is. If, if it floats your boat, then you'd be fucking over it. But I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind something like chucking on. Uh, so the game kicks off at three. If it kicks off at three, maybe the experience makes it later or earlier in the day. I don't know. But the, say, say it is three o'clock still, uh, half twelve or one o'clock, you chuck on the women's team or you put on the under 21s or whatever age groups we've got now and you put another game on before it. So there's two games you, you can go and see if you want and folk can arrive during that game. And, you know, there's a couple of games on the go. I, I wouldn't bother getting into the realms of like... They could put classic games, on, classic games on the TV. Yeah. Can, like before, if you could get a drink. Do you know, imagine if you Aye. go to the... Get there early, and you can sit and watch the six two or the seven now, or right. the cup final or whatever, and have a have a, a pint if that's your thing, and some yeah. food or whatever. That might that might work. But no, um, maybe, maybe change it to the summer. Ah, that's it. You need outdoor heaters for the winter if you're going to do that. Got right. patio heaters in, in each seat. Uh, right, we'll move on. A couple more questions. Dave Graham says, if you had to have an exhaust pipe attached to your nose or your arsehole, which would you go for? What way is the fumes going? Out of the way, the exhaust is... Out of the way, because we just haven't killed you in the end. Aye. I'd say one of those exhausts that you get on the truck that's up beside the driver's seat, like from my arse, (laughs) up here. (laughs) (laughs) I think you would definitely have it out of your arse, wouldn't it? Like, if it was taking fumes away to scare the dog. What was the name of the... Was it... Peach Dragon, where it had like this massive long pipe, and then like the big sort of speaker end to it. Do you remember? Remember Peach Dragon? No. Nah. Nah. What's, nah. Peach, what's Peach Dragon, John? I think it was like a magical, imaginary dragon. My name is, is it a cartoon or something like? It was like uh, one of those. I don't know if you would have called it live action, but I think the the dragon would have been animated. But I think other parts of it were real, as opposed oh, to real would like. Peach. <laughs> so fuck no, off. Peach. <laughs> no peach. Pete. Pete's oh. dragon. Oh, as Pete, Pete, Pete's, I thought you said peach as in the fruit. I don't know about Pete's dragon. I've seen. I don't know. I've seen it all, the, but I know what you mean, right? I thought you, you know, said like the peach big dragon. Horn. I was like, the fuck is peach dragon? I saw so like, like a gramophone, I suppose I'm going for. It's probably a simpler explanation. So, same sort of idea. Exhaust pipe attached to Mars up beside my head, but it's a big uh, gramophone speaker. So it just amplifies the sound of my arse. Yep. I think I can't imagine anybody would want it on their nose. That's just going to be problematic all around, isn't it? Aye. Aye. Um, See, when you think about it, though, like your nose and your arse are kind of exhausts for themselves. They're like yeah. human exhausts. Yeah. One's for your lungs, one's for your intestines. Uh, ben Aruma Gelotti said, if you could choose which charity shop to be covered a glue drag through, which one would it be? <laughs> what, what's the choices here? So we've got, well, we've got Oxfam, Bernardo's. Save the Children, Cancer Research. What's the, all, they're all the ones the, that I've used so far. British Heart Foundation. Aye. Aye. Would you get that t-shirt? For the... <laughs> <laughs> 
That's like for the, the Death Star <laughs> gift shop, is it not? No, I used to have the pretty green one that I had on when I was. Oh, on right. No, I don't know that one you've got. Oh, that one. This is a gift. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> for my mother. Uh-huh. I, thought, I thought it was pretty green. I thought, oh, fair play. It's been pretty green. Fucking charity shop. Eh? <laughs> Can't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ryan says you're to drink one specific alcoholic drink for the rest of your days and it's the only thing you may drink what are you having cocktails and spirits and mixers will also be accepted well they'd have to be because they're fucking alcoholic drinks uh, for, uh, for the <laughs> um, oh what would I go for so it's the only thing you can drink as well eh? aye so, rum and ginger beer that's what I would I was just going to claim there because you can you can then if you you can just pour a wee one and it's just more like a, a refreshing drink rather than an alcohol laden drink that you might have on a Saturday night. Because you can have Guinness mention getting a Guinness in the morning for your breakfast. Aye. Or, or even a pint of lager. Like I, I struggle with that. I could, on the occasions where you where where the, the occasion is to have a, a, a beer at fucking eight in the morning. Airport. I, I do. I, I sometimes think it's no, it's not a thing I do, really. You know, when you see folk on, not not on Facebook, but when I used to be on Facebook and you would see the the holiday folk at the, the airport at four in the morning and with a pint of lager and an all, all day breakfast, and you think it's still four in the morning though. You know what I mean? It's, it's How not... do you feel about chocolate? Like, is there a time in the morning that you'll not eat chocolate before? Aye, I, I tend not to have it in the morning at all, unless like it's a hangover thing. Can okay, like sometimes on a you may have a bacon roll and you think, oh, I fancy a wee bit of chocolate. Like straight after a bacon roll, do you ever get that? No, coffee, bacon roll, coffee, and you think, could do a wee bit of chocolate. I'd have a kick or something, with a cup of coffee. Aye, ah, just that I've never had that issue at the the pub or with anything like if it's if it's been offered, I'll I'll get involved. Aye, I'd have a hi, pints are fine with. I, the problem with that is how quick you get backed up. Eh? So you're rum and uh, what was it, rum and ginger beer? You're saying, yeah, yeah. So I'm not big on on rum, so I'm going to go for like I got vodka and coke. But it's not maybe I would stick with a pint, just have like a pint of lager, and then just stop when you're getting backed up. I think I think when I get backed up with pints, so that's when you start looking towards something a bit. A bit fruitier, yeah. a bit more exotic. <laughs> Aye, I know. I was trying to think, really. Like if... A cider, then. A cider's quite oh, fruity. Aye. Like cider, you get all your, all your black, uh, what's it called? It's the same black thing. Black fruits and all that. It's the volume as much as anything, though. That's the problem with when you're drinking pints. It's the volume of liquid that you're yep. putting yourself. Because you didn't, like, if you were having Coke, for example, if you're having a drink of Coke, you're not going to drink five pints of Coke in, like, in one sitting. Like, yeah. they would do that, but you'd go off and just keep putting liquid in yourself and you didn't piss out at the same rate as you're taking it in at least I don't know not until later in the night and then it's probably the other way around pissing more than I'm fucking <laughs> drinking but um, so that that's a problem if it was only lager you'd, you'd be kind of limited so but I think a vodka and coke for example is as refreshing on a sunny day as a pint of lager like you wouldn't be rocking up to the pub in, t- in anticipation of vodka and coke like you do Aye. Do you know when you watch them pouring the pint, you're thinking about getting it in you. Yeah. <laughs> fucking roasting, you're just like, oh, fuck, I, I'm going to save a pint for that reason. Mm, uh, okay. Aye. Uh, right, Mel Clemens, last question. He says, No, how we say it's sunny, why don't we ever say it's moony? <laughs> I've, I've definitely got that sad disease thing. You know, I, I don't know if I've got it that bad, but I've definitely got it because I. From about fucking September, I'm going. Well, it's getting dark already. <laughs> Constantly going. You ever about think about it. getting like, one of those wee light boxes to sit in your desk? I've I've been mentioned because we were speaking about work a couple of years ago when we were still in the office, and I mentioned that saying I was fucking going about. And I was not. There's two or three folks say that, and they, one of them had the the light thing, the artificial light, for that reason. But it doesn't make me like that doing in the mouth. I just think I, I like the summer better than I like the winter. eh? Um, and November's the worst year of the month, like the year of the month of the year, sorry. Mm. Um, it's just dark all the time. You know what I mean? It's dark when you get up, it's dark when you go to bed. November and January, I think, are the worst two months for that reason. 
Um, but uh, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> why do we don't say that? Oh, why do we? But uh, say that when the when the moon's. Fucking big, everybody mentions it, eh? Like if it's a low moon or a full moon or whatever. It's not a full moon last night. Full full moon tonight. Um, Every comments on it. Do you think it's maybe because it's maybe the heat heat of it? You know, it's sunny, it's hot, you know what I mean? Rather than when it's mini, it's not like it's just dark. I'm going to start using it though. Now, now that it's been brought to my attention, I'm definitely. Mini tonight. Oh, just looking at the Try moon outside. Because it's always moony, but it's not always sunny. Is that maybe the reason? No, it's, it's always moony, though, because you don't always see the moon, do you? But you can and always it, see a moon. Like It's not always the whole moon, but you might see a partial moon. But it's always, not, the moon's always out. It's not, it doesn't make any difference how light or dark it is, really. No, but if, if, it? if it's cloudy or whatever, like you, so that's you, you, and, ah, you, you don't always see the moon. No. Sometimes you see the moon through the day. That's a good phenomenon, yeah. isn't it? I mean, you, you're yeah. like, oh, look at that. And nobody says it's Mooney at that point. Sunny and Mooney at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Do you only see the moon because the sun's reflecting off it? Yeah. Oh. Ah, yeah, it has it has no light of its own. You thinking about this, John? Yes, but I don't know why. Oh no, I was I was thinking if uh, the reason that it's not called or we never refer to it as Mooney because someone got their arse out before they, they started having this conversation. Uh, like, a, a, Mooney, a Mooney was committed before we started contemplating whether it was Mooney outside. Probably Jesus. Uh... But we also do, like, during the day, we say, oh, it's right, it's right, it's getting light. You know, it's, you know or the mornings are getting light again. But... I don't know where I'm going with that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's probably about as, as good a time as, 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 I, as any to... Multi-purpose yeah. descriptions, I think, is what I'm going to, uh, to, to end there. Right, so it's right, Mooney, the now. So, uh, uh, thanks for listening. We'll be back on David, this Thursday, back on Saturday. We're quick bang after we hopefully beat Aberdeen. Uh, and then on Monday, we think we're going to have Joe Newell on Long Bangers um, for a wee guest. So, so uh, tune in for that. If there's anything particularly you want to ask us and, or ask Joe, then, then tweet us and we'll, we'll consider asking it. Consider, correct. <laughs> we might know we might know ask again we'll, we'll pick and choose carefully uh, right thanks for tuning in uh, also going to recast you can go watch our live show in there as well uh, either the interview with Pat Stanton uh, or uh, the rest of the show which has got some good questions in it right till next time catch you later when the trail me down when I broke free I drank all the whiskey in Tennessee I don't drink water no